Hi, good morning and welcome to worship. This is a good time and a good place for us to be together today. Please know that whether you're returning or this is your first time, your presence here is always welcome and appreciated. Our worship service today includes communion, and so in these moments before we begin, I invite you to gather whatever it is you need for communion right where you are today, bread, wine, cracker, grape juice, water, and to have it with you for that portion of worship. I also invite you and encourage you as well to find a space wherever you are or wherever you find yourself that feels a little more holy. So whether that's the sunny space in your home, if that's where you are, um, to gather with you anything that helps you feel more connected with God, whether that is a cup of coffee or your favorite animal, and to have them with you today as we get ready to worship. Our service for today's Stories of Our Faith continues the series that we began last week. Uh, so as I told you last week, I invited the community that I serve to submit to me their favorite stories from the Bible or their favorite passages that are particularly meaningful to them and to tell me why. And so last week we began with Psalm 23, and this week we continue with another uh, Bible passage that will probably be pretty familiar to you as well, which comes from Matthew 11. Like Psalm 23, you've probably heard it a lot at funerals that you have been to in the past, but I encourage you today to open your eyes and to open your ears and to open your hearts to maybe hear it as not just a piece that's reserved for times of death, but also a piece that might speak to you. What does it mean to share a yoke, as Jesus calls it, with Jesus as you walk through this world in the good times and in the times that are particularly hard? And so um, we will dive a little bit deeper into that story today, and you'll get to hear a little bit about why the person who chose this uh, particular Bible passage chose it for themselves, and we will worship together. And so one more time, I invite you to gather whatever it is you need for worship right where you are, and please know as well that you are welcome to interact with our service uh, today, whether that means using the emojis or typing in the comments or sharing our stream out there for people looking for a space to connect. So please join me now in taking a deep breath. And welcome, my beloved, to worship. As always, the words that you see on your screen today, the prayers that we pray, the music that we sing and listen to are invitations for you to participate as fully as you wish and as you are able. So please know that whether you find yourself praying the prayers out loud or simply following along in your head and in your heart, whatever space you find yourself in today is welcome in this place. Our worship service for today begins with the gathering. And so please join me now in our call to worship. To the light-hearted and the heavy-hearted, Jesus says, come. To the well-off and cast-off, Jesus says, come. To the young and the old, Jesus says, come. To the faithful and the faithless, Jesus says, come. To you and me, Jesus says, come. So come, my beloved, just as you are, to the one who promises to give us rest and life. Come and worship, holy God. All are welcome in this place, behold love's amazing grace. All are welcome, all are welcome Bring your hopes, bring your dreams Mercy flows and love redeems All are welcome, all belong Welcome all the broken hearted All who sorrow and despair You are not alone for you are God's home Together we sing and we proclaim All are welcome in this place Behold love's amazing grace All are welcome All are welcome Bring your hopes, bring your dreams Mercy flows and love redeems All are welcome All belong Welcome all who are forgotten, excluded, dignity denied. You are not alone, for you are God's own. 
together we sing and we proclaim All are welcome in this place Behold love's amazing grace All are welcome All are welcome Bring your hopes, bring your dreams Mercy flows and love redeems All are welcome All belong Welcome all who work for justice Bringing hope, charity and peace You are not alone For you are God's own Together we sing and we proclaim All are welcome in this place Behold love's amazing grace All are welcome all are welcome Bring your hopes, bring your dreams Mercy flows and love redeems All are welcome All belong All are welcome All belong All are welcome And so let us pray our prayer of confession together. Gentle God, you invite us from wherever we are and however we are to come and still our restless souls. You sing a song of peace to silence our noisy hearts. You remind us that your way is gentle, that your rhythm in this world is one of unforced grace. But your invitation, your song, your reminder, O oh God, are so hard to believe. For the truth is, we do not know how to rest in your promises. We do not know how to trust that we are enough. We do not know how to stop and remember that who you have created us to be is beautiful and beloved and worthy to behold. We do not know how to simply let you be God. And so we do the only thing we can. We turn back to you, hoping that your call to come to you for rest for our souls is still for us too, right here and right now. Spirit of rest, we confess to you and to each other we are tired and weighed down. We confess to you and to each other that our anger, our hurt, and our sin sometimes threaten to overwhelm us. We confess to you and to each other that what we long for often leaves us unsatisfied. We confess to you and to each other that your way of grace is hard to trust. Yes, we confess it all to you, gracious God, knowing that when we do, you will forgive us, that you will turn the burdens of our hearts into songs of joy. Amen. My beloved, hear this good news. God loves you madly, not because of who you are, but because of who God is. So rest in that promise, rest in that hope, rest in that grace, not because you should, 
but because you can. Thanks be to God. And so I invite you now to take a moment to share God's peace and mercy with one another, saying, the peace of Christ be with you always. Please take this moment to share Christ's peace with those with whom you are gathered today, maybe in person, and those with whom you are gathered across all distances and divides. Our service for today continues with the word. Good morning. This reading is from the ninth chapter of Zechariah. Shout and cheer, daughter Zion. Raise your voice, daughter Jerusalem. Your king is coming. A good king who makes all things right. A humble king riding a donkey. A mere colt of a donkey. I've had it with war. No more chariots in Ephraim. No more war horses in Jerusalem. No more swords and spears, bows and arrows. He will offer peace to the nations, a peaceful rule worldwide from the four winds to the seven seas. And you, because of my blood covenant with you, I'll release your prisoners from their hopeless cells. Come home, hope-filled prisoners. This very day, I'm declaring a double bonus. Everything you lost returned twice over. Word of God, word of life. Blessing the body. This blessing takes one look at you, and all it can say is holy. Holy hands, holy face, holy feet, holy everything in between. Holy even in pain. Holy even when weary. In brokenness, holy. In shame, holy still. Holy in the wit. Holy in distress. Holy when being born. Holy when we lay it down at the hour of our death. So friend, open your eyes. For one moment, see what this blessing sees. This blessing that knows how you have been formed and knit together in wonder and in love. 
welcome this blessing that folds its hands in prayer when it meets you. Receive this blessing that wants to kneel in reverence before you. You who are temple, sanctuary, home for God in this world. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Today's scripture passage that we just heard was chosen by a woman named Mary, and she shared with me that she had chosen this particular passage as being important for her faith and for her life for two reasons. The first was because it was a passage that had been read at her mom's funeral not that long ago, and so she found herself really leaning into it for her mom's service. And she also chose it because it is a good reminder, she said for her, that she can really rely on God in those moments when her heart feels heavy and broken. At the time she shared it with me, she had just lost her uncle, who she describes as being one of the best people uh, that had ever been. And so she found herself during his unexpected loss with the rest of her family, really leaning into this trust and reliance on God in moments that are heartbreaking. And she shared with me that while she knows that at some point in the future, she will be reunited with those that she has loved and that she has lost, that in the meantime, this scripture passage reminds her that she can lean into Jesus in the midst of all of that loss, trusting that God will be with her and holding her up, even in those moments when her heart is breaking. Grace and peace to you, my beloved, from the one whose way is gentle. Amen. There are some biblical texts that as a pastor I get asked to preach on over and over, especially at funerals. And this text from Matthew's Gospel this morning is one of them. Now, this could be because I am pretty sure that somewhere close to the church I serve is a billboard that I have yet to find with my picture and phone number on it that says something like, for a good funeral, call. But I also think it is because at, uh, because at moments of loss and hurt and brokenness, as Mary described, there's just something about these words. Jesus speaks of his gentleness, of his steadfastness of heart that feel, well, like grace that feel like an invitation to breathe deeply when all you have been doing is holding your breath. And for that reason alone, I, and I suspect many of you have come to love these words, especially at times of death and heartbreak. But I'll be honest with you. It hasn't always been this way for me. I haven't always loved these words or held on to their promise. In fact, the very first time I was asked to preach on them for a funeral, I absolutely hated them. You see, there I was, an intern at a congregation of a few hundred people alone. 
My two supervising pastors had just left, one to take a planned sabbatical and the other to take an unplanned new call. And while there was a retired pastor who would show up on Sundays to make Jesus, the rest of the time, I was on my own. And even though it wasn't ideal, I was managing, showing up for meetings, preaching on Sundays, visiting people, helping to teach Sunday school. All in all, right, things were going pretty smoothly. That is, until everyone started dying. Now, the first funeral wasn't too bad. In fact, I even managed to make it through the whole thing without too much fumbling or confusion. But then a week or so later, Evelyn died. And well, that was a different story. You see, part of my job as the intern at this congregation was to visit the shut-ins and bring them communion. And I had been doing that for months. Now, some of my visits were, of course, easier than others, but my favorite visit by far was the one I always did on the second Sunday of the month with Evelyn at her independent living apartment. Now, Evelyn, you see, who was partially blind, was also an absolutely amazing storyteller. And every second Sunday of the month, as I settled into her neat and tidy living room, she would tell me stories of her younger days in Norway, where she had been a really gifted seamstress and embroiderer. And often her stories would have like a show and tell piece to them too, where Evelyn would pull out a dress she had made, a chair she had done needlework on, a picture of something she had made for someone she loved and show it to me. Occasionally, she would even take out from behind her chair her basket of yarn and knitting needles and absentmindedly knit as she told stories of her childhood, of her first love, of her children, and what it was like for her arriving in America. Now, one Sunday afternoon, after having watched her knit for months without even having to look at what she was doing, I asked Evelyn if she could teach me. And with a delighted smile, she did, repeatedly showing me a few simple stitches and feeling mine with her fingers to see if they had turned out okay. Eventually, Evelyn even gifted me her own set of knitting needles, telling me as she handed them to me that she was really getting too old to knit that much more anyway. Although I suspect the real reason was because she knew I needed a lot of extra practice. And so when my phone rang, a week or so after my first funeral on my own, I was completely unprepared for the voice on the other end. Hello? I said as I answered, Hi, this is June, Evelyn's daughter. I just wanted to let you know that my mom had a stroke and is in the hospital. My family and I were wondering if you could come and visit her. Of course, I replied quickly, already walking out the door. Within a few minutes, I was in my car on the way to the hospital without a clue as to what might be waiting for me there. And so when I finally found Evelyn's room and saw her entire family gathered around her bed, I knew what I was going to find wasn't going to be good. So making room for me around the bed, I finally saw Evelyn, or at least what was left of her. For the body in the bed, all twisted up like someone had taken her and wrung her out like a dishcloth, was nothing like the Evelyn I knew. And even though this Evelyn-like person had her eyes wide open, staring straight ahead, the light and the life that had made Evelyn, Evelyn was no longer there. So putting on my pastor face, as I like to call it, I prayed with Evelyn's family, anointed her body with oil, commended her to God's care, told her she was deeply loved, and through my tears, made my way home. And then I waited for the call I knew was coming except it didn't, at least not that day or the next day or the one after that either. In fact, it took almost two excruciating weeks for my phone to finally ring to tell me Evelyn had died. 
And what should have been a quick and painless death wasn't. And everyone, including me, was exhausted. And so a couple of days later, I sat down with Evelyn's family to plan her service. And of course, the text they chose for her funeral was the same one we heard this morning from Matthew's gospel about Jesus' yoke, about his light and easy burden. And while I smiled and nodded at the choice with Evelyn's family, the moment they left my office, I could feel my anger boiling up inside of me. I mean, how in the world could this family who had watched and waited for two weeks while the shell of their mother lingered in this world choose a text like this one? And not just that, but how could Jesus even dare to speak? these words. How could he, in this moment of heartbreak, ask us to do just one more thing, to take his yoke, his work, his life, his ministry upon us, and then pretend like that when we did, that it was going to make everything else in the world so much easier, as if walking through places of hurt and death with something else wrapped across our shoulders would somehow lighten the burden of grief and loss that we were carrying. And so in a fury, I got up and slammed my office door shut and headed out into the world, leaving that yoke behind me in the building, trying to forget it even existed. But I couldn't. For two short days later, I found myself at the funeral home kneeling in front of Evelyn's body. And those words that I had done my best to forget that yoke I had left behind, it all came rushing back at me. But this time, instead of making me angry, instead of making me wonder how a yoke that led to the cross could ever be easy, these words, they calmed me. And perhaps for the very first time ever, I actually heard them, heard them for their promise and their brutal honesty. Because the truth is, as Jesus says over and over again throughout Matthew, being a disciple, it isn't easy. Being a disciple does not mean escaping from your burdens or your struggles or the events in your life that leave you weary and exhausted and hurt. No, being a disciple does not mean any of that. Instead, being a disciple means being yoked, being harnessed. It means literally being attached to Jesus who promises to never let us go or forget us or leave us abandoned and all alone. In fact, if you were to do a quick Google search of yokes, you would see that most yokes are actually designed for two animals or two people. In fact, there is actually a space underneath each arm of the yoke itself for two people or two animals to walk side by side, sharing the burden so that neither has to bear it alone. Yes, walking with a yoke, kind of like the life of faith, is still hard work. It is still symbol of burden and of hardship. But at least according to Jesus, choosing to share a yoke with him means that you do not have to carry whatever it is that weighs you down alone. You don't have to carry sickness or death or heartbreak or disappointment or even death itself alone. You don't have to let the load be yours alone. And I don't know about you, my beloved, but to know that whatever it is that burdens us, whatever it is that weighs us down, whatever it is in this life that hurts us, that there is Jesus right there beside us, half a shared yoke across his shoulders too. Well, that, that feels like pretty good news to me. Now, will this shared yoke make our lives pain-free or perfect? Of course not. But this life is bound to feel a little lighter, isn't it? 
if you have someone else walking through it with you, by your side, sharing the burden with you, so that if even for a little while you can breathe once again, so that even if only for a little while, your soul can find the rest that it needs to continue on. Amen. down thou weary one lay down thy head upon my breast so I came to Jesus as I was weary worn and sad I found in him a resting place and he has made Our service for today continues with the prayers of the people. And as always, you are invited to type any prayer requests that you have into our worship service today, trusting that they will be held by me and by our community this week. And so as God's beloved people, we join our hearts and spirits together, praying to the God who hears us and promises to respond. We pray for the church, for prophetic leaders, for our life, We pray for creation, for protection for lands and creatures, for freedom from apathy. We pray for nations, for leaders who act with justice and equality, for love for our neighbor. We pray for those who cry out for mercy, for those who live in isolation, for healing for all who suffer. For our prayers. We pray for those who have died in faith, comfort for those who mourn, and for the promise of resurrected life. Gentle God, receive these prayers and those too deep for words. Show us the easy yoke of faith so that we, like our prayers, may rest in you. Amen.
our service continues with the meal. God feeds us with the presence of Jesus Christ. And so let us pause to offer all of who we are and all of what we have to the one who satisfies the need of every living thing. And so the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. With hearts filled with joy, we bring our praise to you, God of rest. For through Jesus you came down to be with us and to show us your way of rest and grace. As we come to you around this table, may the peace and welcome we find here make us restless to serve one another and to create communities of justice and mercy in the world. So that when that day finally comes and we are gathered together with all of those who have found their rest in you, we may sing out with joy for your yoke of gentleness and your ways of grace. God in community, holy in one. Amen. And so as we do in our places, what you did in an upstairs room, send down your Holy Spirit on us and on our gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us your body as we become yours. For among friends gathered round a table, Jesus took bread and broke it and said, this is my body broken for you. Later, he took a cup of wine and said, this is the new relationship with God made possible because of my death. Take it, all of you, to remember me. Amen. And so gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So taste and see that the Lord is good. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. Amen. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. And so may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Our service for today concludes with the sending.
And so a blessing for all of you. Go now listening for Christ's voice. Take his yoke upon you and learn from him. Walk with him in his ways. Be rest for those who are weary and hope for those whose burdens are almost too heavy to bear. And may the God who feels compassion for all lead you into the unforced rhythms of grace so that you may come to live a life of gentleness and love always. Amen. And so go in peace, my beloved, letting tenderness and goodness be your yoke and your guide. And thank you so much for worshiping with us this week. And I cannot wait to worship with all of you again soon. <laughs>